Hi everyone, thanks for making the left turn, and welcome back to the Jackson Left channel and a special episode of History Jacksonville. I'm so excited because I'm right here, uh, behind me is the Matthews Bridge, the John Eli Matthews Sr. Bridge, uh, that's just east of downtown Jacksonville. It connects downtown Jacksonville with the neighborhood of Arlington and with the beaches, with the Arlington Expressway connecting the, with the bridge, uh, with downtown and Arlington, and on out to the Atlantic Boulevard and the beaches. And I have a lot to talk about. I have a lot to talk about the history of Matthews the Man and Matthews the Bridge. Let's first talk about Matthews the Man. He was born in 1892, and he was a big-time politician here in Jacksonville. Later went on to some prominence in Tallahassee, but first let's talk about the fact that he raised, uh, through, uh, through the means of politics, uh, good old boy politics in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s. He was part of the movement to get the bridge built. He had been uh, pushing for the building of the bridge since the 1930s. He was able to get the funding in the late 1940s, and it cost $11 million in 1950, uh, 1950s dollars, $11 million to build uh, what we have right here uh, in 2014. So construction began shortly before the beginning of the Korean War. Uh, it uh, began uh, in May of 1950, and it wouldn't be completed until April of 1953. Uh, on April the 15th, 1953, the bridge opened to traffic, and there was a dedication ceremony. He then had been uh, become, by this point, a state senator. And so State Senator John E. Matthews Sr. Uh, had the distinction of attending with his wife the dedication ceremonies. Now, the interesting thing to remember about uh, Mr. Matthews Sr. was that he was a product of his time. Uh, he uh, was a segregationist. Uh, he had a role in changing the way uh, 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 people uh, on the city council were elected before consolidation, uh, and so he had a role in eliminating the ward-based system uh, that uh, enabled African Americans to be a part of the of the city politics. And African Americans were glad to see him actually move on to Tallahassee. And as things began to change, African Americans became more involved in politics. But he also had his mark in state politics. Uh, not only was he a state senator, but then he went on to become uh, to be to get on to the Florida Supreme Court. Uh, and as Chief Justice of the Florida Supreme Court in 1953, uh, he swore in the, uh, the new governor after Dan McCarty died. Uh, he swore in the new governor, Charlie Johns. Uh, so uh, that uh, was another, another thing about, uh, about him was that uh, he stood by the segregation clause for schools in the 1885 Florida Constitution when a ruling came around that the Florida Supreme Court had to vote on relating to school bonds at the Brown v. Board of Education uh, decision. So, uh, uh, a man of his time, but I'll tell you one thing, in the late 1940s was that he brought home the bacon to Jacksonville, this big bridge. And the thing about it was, this was before the Jacksonville Expressway Authority, this was before the Jacksonville Transportation Authority, and before the expressway started to really be constructed. So this massive bridge, uh, which is 7,376.3 feet in length, uh, the, uh, there are four lanes of traffic, two going uh, either direction, east and west. Uh, eventually the expressways were joined with the bridge, and it was originally silver in color. It wouldn't be painted maroon until 1984. And, you know, uh, one thing that was amazing, too, was this bridge was built before I-95 was constructed. It was actually constructed to be a part of a bypass system to bypass from US-1, South US-1, uh, that went through the city over the Main Street Bridge, uh, to connect up with US-1 North. Uh, so there was a lot of road building after the bridge was built. What became the Fort Warren Bridge started out as the Gilmore Street Bridge. That bridge was constructed south of here uh, to, the, uh, to the southwest. Uh, the I-95 uh, was constructed to connect with that bridge, and so eventually people would take I-95. But this was at one point a bypass that people would use to get around uh, up to North US-1. 
So that's something that was fascinating. Now, the distinction of why is the bridge painted maroon? Uh, it's painted maroon because at the time, in the 1980s, there were the, uh, the Jacksonville Bulls, which at the time there was a, a, uh, uh, a franchise of the U.S. Football League. Uh, and so it, for a little bit of time in the 1980s, we had a football team. It wasn't NFL, it was USFL. Uh, that it, that uh, was at the Gator Bowl uh, back before it was called Everbank Field and back before it was as big as it as it uh, as it is now and as prominent as it is now, and so uh, I, in a way, kind of liked it when it was silver because I can remember it. Uh, you know, I can remember my earliest memories of downtown Jacksonville uh, were in the late 70s, early 1980s, riding with my family down this this span as it comes down. From, uh, from the top of the span down, you descend into downtown, and you see uh, on a, a really nice day, you have the sun glistening over the skyscrapers, the, the, uh, the uh, Gator Bowl, and the Hart Bridge over in this direction. So uh, uh, this area here is predominantly, of course, industrial area. In fact, I'm standing right next to uh, some old railroad tracks, uh, and you can see some of the shipping uh, and the old... Ford factory over this direction too. So a lot of great stuff here uh, and uh, quite an amazing thing. And the thing about that back then was you had to pay a toll to go over the bridge on the Arlington side. Uh, coming and going, you had to pay a toll and the toll plaza was over there. And when this bridge was built, Arlington wasn't as developed as it is now. It was uh, developed uh, extensively with neighborhoods, uh, uh, subdivisions, really nice houses in the 1950s and 1960s. Where I grew up, the first house I grew up in was on Morgana Road in the Arlington neighborhood, right off Arlington Road, and it was built in the 1950s, shortly after this bridge was built. So this bridge spurred a lot of development. One thing that was distinctive about it was the bad grading that was over on the top. On the top of the, the span, on a rainy day, you could feel your car shift, especially with the wind. Uh, so you didn't get a lot of traction. And there were reports as early as 1969 of issues with, with, the, uh, with the, uh, the top of the span. And I can remember in the mid-90s driving my old 1977 Toyota Corolla over this bridge and uh, having to hang on for dear life as I drove over in the wind and on the wet grading. They finally fixed it. But then uh, we did have a bit of, a, a bit of an accident with a, a ship, a, a U.S. Naval command ship called, uh, it's the U, it was the USNS Lieutenant Harry Martin, uh, and it uh, accidentally rammed the span, uh, rammed uh, uh, one of the concrete uh, piling areas uh, and caused damage to the span. Uh, and that was in September 2013. It took about a month for it to get fixed. There was a lot of aggressive fixing. In the meantime, people were using the bridge, the Hart Bridge, uh, that was built later, after the Matthews. It was built in 1967. Uh, so uh, what an amazing bridge. What an amazing history we have here. And you know, the Matthews Bridge is a survivor. If you think about it, I mean, look at the, the time span of which I've talked about. The late 1940s. Uh, in the early 1950s, the Korean War, and, and despite that, despite all that was going on in the early 50s, they got this bridge built. They've managed to keep things going. People go, uh, you know, go over it every day, thousands and thousands of cars a year. Uh, and, and it all started in 1953. I mean, and, and it was, it's something that's truly amazing. And it's why I'm out here uh, talking about Jacksonville history from time to time here on the Jack's Left channel. I'm very excited. There's The best is yet to come. There's more to talk about as I start going out into the historic neighborhoods and talking about some of the different uh, areas also of downtown Jacksonville. We also have our special series, series within a series called Forgotten Downtown. So I'll be going into some of the nooks and crannies off the beaten path and maybe sometimes on the beaten path as I look more intently at downtown Jacksonville and where we're going from here. So I'm very excited to talk about the politics, the government, the history, and uh, all the different things that are happening. So the best is yet to come here on the, uh, the uh, Jack's Left channel. And I'd like to encourage you to please subscribe. Please check us out on Jacksonville Perspectives on Facebook, uh, on uh, the Jack's Left Public Affairs channel page on Facebook. And really, you can really see so much about what's going on on the Left Turn Network 
on www.thelefttournetwork.com. So I'm very excited, and uh, the best is yet to come. There's more to talk about, and I'm sure there's more bridges to talk about, too. Very excited, and I hope you are, too. Let me know what you think. Do you have any special memories about uh, the Matthews Bridge? Any thoughts about uh, Matthews the man, uh, John Matthews Sr., or also his son, John Matthews uh, Jr., who was really highly esteemed uh, in, uh, here in Jacksonville? Uh, he was a, uh, also was a legislator. He was also a, uh, a, a corporate lawyer, and he also helped to get the University of North Florida built. So a uh, truly a legacy. But I will say this. I have to admire a man who could get $11 million of funding uh, in the late 40s and be able to attend his own dedication, uh, dedication of the bridge named in his honor. But if you think about it, it caused a lot of growth. Uh, for Jacksonville, a lot of development in Arlington and helped to make Jacksonville what it was. But, you know, one thing, though, uh, you know, he, he did have uh, that, that side to him uh, that, that is something to think about. Uh, as the times were changing, he refused to change. Uh, but, but he went on to Tallahassee, and so here we are. Uh, and the one thing that does survive, at least, is the bridge that he helped to create, and at least the legacy uh, the civil rights legacy advanced beyond the way he th viewed the world. Uh, so complex man, but uh, quite a result and quite a benefit for Jacksonville. Hopefully we can have more people that, uh, that will do a lot more uh, for advancing uh, our growth here in the city. Take it easy. Thanks for watching. See you later.